Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Redemptive Grace Ministries, a church, a ministry that love people and we trust God. You may be seated. Who is here for the very first time? Is anybody here for the first time? Anybody? No? Nope? Okay, we're all family. Before we get started, we see the youth. They're, they're leaving. Uh, have a good time, youth. Um, tonight is a very special night at RGM. Um, if you were here last week, you heard that we were we do, we're doing a landmine series. We talked about unforgiveness, and we talked about fear. We talked about compromise. We, we talked about um, pride. And last week, we talked about the landmine of uncontrolled thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts. One of the scriptures that I used, you could put it up, is 2 Corinthians 10, 4. We're going to read that really quick while they get set up. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Continue. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Can you put that up in the NLT? I'm going to read a different version of it. Thoughts that are uncontrolled can lead to actions that you didn't expect. Thoughts that are uncontrolled can lead to actions that you did not expect. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. We have mighty weapons that God has given us to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. There are arguments all around us, but they are false arguments, and the word of God can knock those false arguments down. But when I say that, you don't have to debate the word. Know the word in your heart. Understand that the word is truth, that the word is what we stand on. We don't have to debate the word. Live the word. Live the word and let the word be alive in you. We destroy Every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God, we capture their rebel rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Tonight, we want to continue on in our series. And this is a series, this, this particular one, I said that it is every man's battle. But it's not only every man's battle, it's every one's battle. Uncontrolled thoughts that lead to uncontrolled actions. Now for parents, this is a PG rated night. PG, because what we're, what we're talking about is, is, is not wrong. It's wrong in the eyes of God when we, when we have actions that are led by our thoughts. But what we want to talk about that, that parents you need to know is we're going to talk about thoughts that lead to actions that are of a sexual nature sexual nature so parents give you a disclaimer before we go before we go forward before we go forward because it's every parent's responsibility to manage what their kids hear okay what better place to talk about it than in church than in church do you realize and I'm going to hand the mic over in a minute do you realize that more men of God fall from the place that the Lord has placed them in the church, in leadership, in pastoral roles because of sins of sexual nature than what you would imagine. Now, I don't have the numbers. Pastor D has the numbers for that. But we just lost over the past week a couple of really high-profile pastors due to sins of sexual nature that lead churches of five and 10,000 members. Now, you would think that there's a lot of accountability around those men in, in, in those places, but it just shows you that there are thoughts that can lead to actions. And there are landmines that the enemy sets up to trip us up, to blow us up, to get us off course and hurt other people on the journey. So when a pastor falls, the, the scripture says, smite the sheep or smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter, which means that if I take out the pastor, 
then what's going to happen with the sheep? And so when you take out a pastor like that, it's, it's very dangerous to the flock. And again, the enemy gets in there and he can wreak havoc. So what we don't want is that. Um, so in that, we're gonna, I'm going to pass the mic to Pastor D. What they're doing is they're, they're studying, this, these men are studying this group, uh, this, this study called the Conquerors. Come on up, Pastor D. And uh, he's going to share a little bit about that because I'm going to let you know the next time that they do it, which is May 1st, it's not a series for men that deal with sexual addictions. They're men that took it because they just wanted to be better equipped for the word, from the word, and to be able to help men that may have to deal with that or may be dealing with it or may be caught up in it. But from that, they said that it's not a, a series that just men dealing with this should be at. It should be for every man. And I've heard that from at least four or five people that have taken the course. So with that, I'm going to leave it in the hands of Pastor D. Everybody give it up for Pastor D. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I was praying this morning, I began to start weeping uncontrollably. I hope that doesn't happen right now. And my weeping was for the body of Christ. As I see the body falling to sexual sin, the enemy has taken a turn toward the church and toward the family. I remember reading a book uh, several years ago by uh, the late Kenneth E. Hagan. The book was entitled Divorce, Marriage, and Remarriage. And in the very first chapter, Brother Hagan said that the enemy has his sights set on the church and the family. So we don't have to look very far to see that he's made some definite inroads into the church and into the family as well. I want to do something tonight. I want everybody to get out of their seat and come to this altar. Everyone. If you're able to get move and come forward, come forward. We're going to go on the offensive tonight. Amen. Amen. You know, we're tired of laying back and let the enemy just wreak havoc in homes and wreak havoc in churches, pull down men of God from pulpits, scatter sheep, split churches. We're tired of it. And we've got to go on the offensive. We've got to go on the offensive. And tonight I want us just to cry out to God. Cry out to God with all your heart. Because it's time to fight. It's time to pull out our sword. And begin to start cutting. Cutting away. Cutting away of all the things that are unholy. All the things in our lives. The Bible tells us to lay aside every weight and every sins that so easily besets us. Lord, we want to do that tonight. We want to cry out of our side. We want to cry out to you, Lord, tonight. Father, help us. Help us to be strong. Help us to be men and women of God. Help us to resist, Father. As we resist, we become stronger, Lord. And we're able to resist every time the enemy would try to come in and try to take control, Lord. Father, we ask you to strengthen us tonight, Lord. Strengthen every home. Strengthen this church, Lord Jesus, like never before, Father. And there are still battles we have to fight, Lord. But, Lord, we're putting those battles in your hands, Lord Jesus. And, Father, we're going to watch you do your thing, Lord. We're going to watch it happen, Father. Because we know, Lord. We know, God, that you're with us, Lord. And we just thank you tonight, Lord. Every home represented here tonight, Father. I ask you, Father, to speak to those men of God, Lord. Those men, those priests, those, those priests of the homes, Father. Right. Speak to them, Lord. They're the spiritual leaders in their homes, Father. And, Lord, when they're taken out, then the home has no covering. Lord, protect your men, Father. Protect them, Lord Jesus. Protect everyone in that family, Lord. Subsequently, after he takes out the man of God in that home, the next thing is the seed. The seed is who he's after. 
He moves in generations just like God does. If he can take out one generation, he'll bring that into the next generation and take that next generation out. But that's not happening no more. Not in this church, God. Not in this church. Hallelujah. Not in this church. Hallelujah. We're taking offensive. We're taking the offensive right now, Father. And we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen every person, Father. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us, God. We just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, Father. We thank you, Lord God. And we give you all praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. And those men that uh, I spoke to to come up, come on up now. Thank you, Lord God. We give you praise, Father. Saints of God, we are truly in the last days. We're in the last of the last days. I want, want you to see something. Bring up um, from the Amplified, could you bring up uh, 2 Timothy 3? Just a second here. We are in the last of the last days. The days of letting ourselves be run over by demonic forces, that day is gone. It's gone. It's over. We have to mount an offensive. This program that we're, we're working now is part of that offensive that we're mounting. Amen. Okay, let's read that. Uh, but understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Next. Next verse, please. For well, people will be lovers of self. How, how often do we see that now? People lovers of self. And utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous, boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Next verse, please. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhumane. Rentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, loose in, mor loose in morals. Right. Loose right. in morals. And, con and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of God. We can stop right there. Fierce haters of God. We don't have to look very far uh, today. Pick up our newspapers. Turn on our televisions. God is not welcome anymore in this country or in any country. But he's welcome in this church. Amen. Amen. And we're going to praise him and glorify him in this church. That's right. And in churches, and in churches around the world. Amen. Praise God. Let me read you some statistics. 70% of Christian men struggling with sexual bondage come from homes where rules override relationships. And this is the one that's disturbing. A study of over 3,000 data points discovered that 60 to 70% of men 50 to 58 percent of pastors, 20 to 30 percent of women in evangelical churches are sexually addicted. Pretty strong stuff. So the enemy has set his sights on the church. And he is making some inroads. But he's made the last inroad in this church. Amen. Amen. It will not happen again. So behind me are some men of God who've taken this course and you'll be hearing from them tonight as to what they got out of the course. Uh, when we, we announce this course and we talk about purity, um, you may say to yourself, well, 
Man, I'm not, I'm not dealing with anything impure. Not me. I'm good. I'm okay. But guess what? I heard Pastor say it Sunday. It was, it was really good. Really jumped out of my seat here. We're grandfathers. We're fathers. We're sons. We're uncles. We're brothers. We're cousins. And we're friends. So we've got to help each other. We've got to hold each other's arms up in, in this process. Okay, this fight, this fight is not a fight that we can fight alone. We have to tie our hands together and fight. That's right. Amen. We're stronger. One puts a thousand, two puts ten thousand. That's good. Amen. That's good. Okay, so uh, some of the things that we've learned in this course. Let me let me play it a little uh, little uh, int intro. Can you do that for us, please? God guarantees you, his word is very clear, the curse will be visited the third or fourth generation. We will create trails in our brain that are just going to fire on an automatic sequence. You're fighting for the very lineage that God gave you. What a man does in life becomes history, but what he puts into motion becomes his legacy. And if you will break this curse, then your sons and your daughters have a better shot. It took me three and a half years, but I'll tell you now, you know what I'm having the joy of? is sweet revenge. The very thing the enemy used against me as a weapon, now God is forged by the hammer of his adversity that he's brought in my life, by the hammer of his challenges, by the correction of my soul, and he's formed it into a weapon, and I'm taking sweet revenge against the enemy. And that's what God has for you. bad day determine who you are and how you can fly. It will put a weapon in your hand that you can conquer and begin to help other men. I believe in you, Roberts. Okay, we have a sign-up side up sheet out in the uh, information booth outside for those who want to uh, get in our next class. Not the, not the, uh, yeah, the May class. Pastor talked about. Okay, some of the things that we're, we're learning in that class. Our three pound brain um, composes 2% of our body mass, but uses 20% of your energy. 20% from a little three pound brain. So when we study for a test and we study hard for a test, and we come back and we're fatigued, that brain has been working overtime. Okay? 20% of that little brain is working. And, it, and hopefully it's working on the right things. Right. Brain, composed of over, uh, brain is composed of over 100 billion neurons. More connections in your brain than in the Milky Way. Repeated behaviors continues uh, creates uh, neurological pathways in the brain. Now, what happens when we are involved in sexual sin or we're involved in anything that um, we do rep uh, repetitively? We have pathways in our brain that form. When we learn how to ride a bike, when we learn how to tie our shoes, pathways formed in our brain. We can reach down after a while and tie our shoes without even looking at it. So if, we, if we're involved in negative behavior, a negative pathway is now formed in that brain. That's where we get our addictive behaviors from. And whatever the addiction is, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is, there is a pathway in that brain that's been formed because that addiction and that behavior has been repetitive. Can we change that? We found in this series, yes, yes we can. It can be reversed. Amen. Um, prefrontal cortex where we think, reason, and make moral and ethical decisions. The prefrontal cortex is this part of our brain right here. This is where we make all our decisions, all our moral decisions, all our, all our thinking, all our reasoning is in this part of our brain. Well, guess what? What we found out is this thing doesn't really get developed till we're 20, till 25 years. It's fully developed. So that means 
we're, we're really not competent enough, especially when we're little folks, we're not competent en enough to make just and moral decisions because our, our, our frontal cortex hasn't formed yet. So the enemy uses that, those early years of our lives to instill sexual abuse, abandonment, even divorce. All these things that are created in our family structure, we talked about the family being the target. These things are created in our family structure. The child then has a problem growing up and being relational. Most marriage, that's why most marriages uh, are, are divor or divorces come within the first six years of marriage. Why? Because when, when we get together, we bring all this stuff to the marriage. And then we're trying to work things out. You know, you got your stuff, I got my stuff. And in this day and age that we live in now, we are very impatient. If we don't like what's going on after a year, we're out of there. We're gone. We're gone. That's why our divorce rate, one of the reasons why our divorce rate is so high. Um, there's a, a part of our brain called the limbic system, and this is, this, is, this is all in the course, folks. The limbic system. In the limbic system is the thalamus, the hippocampus, and the, and the uh, oh boy, thalamus, hippocampus. It's, it's three things within that limbic system, okay? <laughs> the limbic system, once it's, once it's uh, goes into overdrive. It's, your, it's your, really your fight and flight part of your brain. Once it goes into overdrive, it overruns your frontal cortex, the place where you think and reason. Once it overruns the frontal cortex, you're making decisions now on your emotions and not in, in, in an area where you can reason things out. Within that uh, limbic system, when we're young people, there's a point there where the enemy can instill a lie into our, our thinking. If we've been sexually abused, the lie is you let it happen. My wife tells a story, and I think she told it to the ladies, that when she was uh, a young child in school, maybe about fourth, fifth grade, she had a teacher uh, that I guess the teacher probably just didn't like her. She could read very well, but when she stood up in front of the class to read, she was very nervous. So every time she stood up to read, she would get nervous and she'd start fumbling through her words. And the teacher would say, sit down, stupid. And that happened to her throughout all that year in that classroom. The teacher labeled her as stupid. So she carries that, she, and, and she's over it now, but she carried that for a long time. She carried it. And she thought that she was stupid when she, we know that she wasn't. Words are powerful. Right. So we carry these things, we carry these things from our youth, we carry them into our adult life. And they become problems for us, especially in our, our relationships with each other. We can't relate. You know, God started the whole thing with relationships when he created Adam. He wanted a relationship with man. So relationships are in our DNA. We have to have relationships, or we should have relationships, to have a healthy, a healthy uh, lifestyle. So relationships are important. But if the enemy can get that lie in there and get you to believe the lie, and you take that into your adult life, relationships now become very difficult for you. Okay? All right. Okay, I'm going to uh, get to my last one, then I'll let you hear from our guys.
There's something called uh, epigenetics. Epigenetics. Okay, I'm going to read. I, I want to read you the definition of it. Epigenetics and generational curses. The study of, of epigenetics has revealed that the choices we make in life will alter how our genes are expressed. This study sheds new light to what the Bible refers to as generational curses and blessing. We can physically pass down our sins to our children and generations after us, or we can pass down blessing. What a man does becomes history. What he puts in motion becomes his legacy. When we go uh, to a doctor's office and we filling out our forms in the doctor's office, Many of the questions on that form would say uh, they want to know things about your family. What ailments were in that family? Did your family have uh, cancer in it? Did it have uh, diabetes? Did it have so forth? That shows you that things do come through generational lines. Okay. So the three things that, that uh, the course talks about is we get DNA from our parents. You know, we heard the old expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What does that mean? That means that a lot of things that your parents do, you, you do them also. So that's our DNA. Those are the things that our parents have given us that pass down with us. The second thing is our environment. If we're in an environment that's chaotic, then we're not... We're not a person that has a, a stable life in that chaotic environment. If uh, we're in the home of an alcoholic or we're in the home of an angry person, you know, those things will be pa will pass down to you as well. And the other thing is any traumas that you may have uh, been involved in. If you've been sexually abused, if you've been raped, we carry those things with us. And those traumas become wounds in our, in, our, in our soul, in our soulish area. And we're always looking to, to heal those wounds, but we don't know how to heal them. And if we're not in Christ, it's almost impossible to heal them. Right. And God's the only one that can reach into that heart and heal that wound. So what do we do? We go to drugs. We go to sex. We go to all these things to try to look for healing for the pain that we have in those wounds. And then we, and we do that in, in, with our behaviors. And then once we do the behavior, we know it's wrong. Then here comes shame and guilt. Right. And we carry this shame and guilt with us continually in our lives. So we're always fighting. And, and the, the, our text calls it binging and purging. We have periods of, of sobriety where everything is fine. And then we go right back to the addictive behavior once again. Right. But this course, uh, this course is wonderful. It really is. It's wonderful. There's so much information. I'm, I'm just scratching the surface, guys, right? Am I telling the right? Mm -hmm. I'm just scratching the surface on the information that you, you will learn from this course. It is a wonderful course. And I, I, I would say every guy in this church should go. Now, here's what we want to happen. You have to, to get the maximum out of the course, you have to be there for the full six weeks. Okay? You can't miss a week because when you miss a week, there is so much information that you're going to miss. We play the tapes again for the second and third time, and we're still picking up stuff, right, Chip? We're still picking up things that we missed for the, the, the last two times that we saw it. So the informa there's information overload on this tape. So that's why we, we take notes when the tape is going on. So I'm, I'm challenging you guys, and we're, we're trying to come up uh, with, with a ladies' group, a group as well. And hopefully we'll come up with that ladies' group. We always, or, already ordered the book, so we'll come up with that very soon. But I'm challenging all you guys. Sign up. Get in the group. You won't regret it. It's great information. And guess what? It's not just for purity. And the guys are going to tell you what they learned, not just the purity aspect of it, but what they got out of it. Right. Okay, and I'll pass it on. Pass it, Jeff. Oh, you first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pass it. 
Yes. Come on, George. Um, oh, you want us? You just said we're not sitting. No. Okay. Looking forward. <laughs> um, I, you're you're going to hear from all of us, and if it's okay, Pastor G, I'm going to chime in when other guys talk as well. Uh, I'm just going to give one of my main takeaways. Um, we are continuing to see that science is proving God's word, which is, which is awesome. And as you heard from Pastor D, as we got into the class, especially the first group, I mean, we, we were learning about the brain. We're like, what's going on here? We thought we were in this thing for, for sexual addiction. And there were a lot of us that have already conquered that years ago. But again, like Pastor Mike said, um, it's good refresher. It's good to know as we, as we counsel other men. Um, and good, it's always good for you individually to stay at your peak. Amen. Okay, don't ever think that you know everything. That's good. Um, but anyway, one, one big takeaway for me, um, and Pastor D, you were talking about, about the, um, the, the pathways that our brain creates. It's amazing how God's built us. But y'all know Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by how? Okay, so you can be transformed. See, a lot of men deal with this guilt and this shame and think that there's no way out. But God says you can be transformed. And by how? The word says it. You can renew your mind. You can build new pathways. And I love the example that you gave, Pastor D, about tying your shoe, learning to ride a bike. Your brain literally, as we learn, creates pathways that teach you that behavior or how to do that. You can actually, though, wither that pathway back up and kill it. That's renewing your mind. So, but the devil knows the word too, right? Yeah. Amen? So he's going to try to put things in front of you, whether it's on the Internet, whether it's, it's your environment, people around you, and it's going to slowly start to build these pathways. But we can kill those back. And it's encouraging there is a way out. Amen. So that, that there was very, that was my big takeaway um, in, in the class. But it doesn't happen overnight, man. That's right. you, you, women too. You've got to stay after and stay after it. I remember when I started, now it's my, I guess my pathway, meeting with the Lord every morning. That's just <laughs> non-negotiable. Yeah. But I had to work at that thing. I had to build that pathway in my head. So it's just never thought about again. So. I thought that part was extremely awesome. That's how God actually built us. The devil tries to create these pathways too, these negative ones, but we can kill them back. Amen? Like Pastor D said, we can fight against that. And again, I can comment on other guys too. Right? Is yours on, Charlie? I think so. Oh, way to go, George. <laughs> All right. Um, this is my second time around in this class, and, and it's good that I took it the second time. Uh, two weeks ago, I was leading the class, and something really jumped out at me that I didn't notice the first time. And instead of chopping it up with my version of it, I'm just going to read it to you it's just a little bit. It says, it is a serious thing when, I, when one's eyes have been opened to the truth, because with truth comes freedom. Is Satan can keep a toehold of deception in your life to stop you from getting completely free, he will do it. Because bound Christians can't fight. If you are bound up by your sins or your past histories, if you've got issues in your life that you don't realize are there, especially you men, there's things that I saw in this, in this series that... I knew were there, but I didn't realize they were really messing with me. But they were. I could see issues in my past where this thing rose up. And it caused me to think this certain way. But you need to get in there. Because if you're coming to church and you're reading the word, your eyes are being open. Satan doesn't like that. And so he's going to start bringing those bondages out. And as long as they come out, you'll never be able to defeat him because he's always going to have that little secret, that edge that he can hold you back. Because when you get ready to step out, he'll go, well, what about this? 
or what about this? And the other thing is, many Christians never reach their full spiritual potential. They never reach the point of becoming weapons of war in God's hand because they've never conquered the strongholds in their lives. You got to overcome these things. In these groups, men, we bring them out, we talk about them, and the minute you talk about them, you had defeated the enemy because he no longer has a secret he can use against you because the rest of the men know about it and they will stand behind you when he tries to bring it up. And this goes for women too. These little secrets will keep you from moving forward and they'll also destroy your families. The enemy wants to take out the husband because the wife was never supposed to be the leader of the house. And when that happens, he has full reign to come into your house, ladies, and mess with you. So let's get with our groups. Get in these groups. Talk with somebody. Get somebody that you can trust and talk with them. Expose your secrets and the enemy can't. You know, and you'll be set free. You'll be free from any bondage that the enemy may hold against you. You'll be free to do whatever God tells you to do. And another thing, you will do it with power. There you go. Because there will be no restrictions against you anymore. That's all I have. That, that's me, I guess. All right. That's hard to follow two pastors. And a new reborn Christian stands up after that all right um i have grown a lot in the last four months since i walked through that door put the mic in your mouth buddy. and uh i decided that i couldn't do everything on my own anymore because everything i tried to do failed and this class helped me realize the things that i grew up with were the way that i kept going and if I wanted to change that for my family and be the head of my household and lead my family in the way that God wants me to lead, I need to fix me. There you go. And uh, after f starting to fix me and coming to church and being faithful about that and praying and changing the way that those grooves in my brain were created by the way I was raised and by the way that my father's father was raised. Right. I am now changing the way that my children are being raised. Amen. So it's, it's amazing to see if any of you know my family, what we've gone through. My wife is starting to come around. She's starting to pray. I'll have a tough day at work, and she'll be like, be anxious for nothing. Who are you? <laughs> you aren't my wife. Because she told me to buck up and pull my bootstraps up and just deal with it. But she's changing. She reads Amen. the Bible. So we have grown tremendously, and this is helping me. It's not just about sexual bondage. It's about anger issues. It's about anything. Um, and if you can start changing that, you can change the way your kids grow up. Oh, yeah, you right. can change Absolutely. the way your grandkids are going to grow up. Good, and you can change your whole environment in your house. And that's where it starts. Wonderful, man. David, just a couple. You know, we talk about breaking chains. That's, that's what he's talking about. That's what we're getting taught. And that's what God has put into us. We're breaking chains. Chains that hold us down, we're breaking them so they no longer hold us down. Good, good, good. All right, so one of the things... David, I, I got one more. No. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that mic. <laughs> You're right. so one, uh, the main thing that I learned was um, how the devil's going to attack you. He's going to attack you right in the place that you got victory. That's good. So for me, I thought, since I was a drug addict, alcoholic, I thought it was going to be through drugs and alcohol. But it's not. The place I got victory was controlling my anger, um, learning how to love, 
forgiveness, things like that. So what I'm learning is, you know, day to day when things go bad and I get upset, that's exactly the, what he's trying to do to attack me in those ways so I can go back to the way I used to handle things, that's to good. the drug, to that's the alcohol. Good. So that was one thing. Um, the other thing is, is two are better than one. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fell, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. I mean, that's what these groups do. They give you somebody to lean on, somebody that's to good. talk to. That's good. Good, David. Uh, Chip, I also want to comment on David. So, David... <laughs> They like you no, know, he said, you know, he he learned he learned how the devil attacks you. Guys, if we can be aware of how the enemy's gonna attack us, we can be ahead of it. You you won't be two years down the road and look back and say, What just happened to me? So David, that's that's an excellent point. So that education's great. And the Bible even tells us, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Yeah. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Right. So once we learn how we're being attacked then we can focus ourselves right. to, to counterattack. Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's like we talked about in there, like a football game. You study film before the game. You want to learn your opponent. Pass Mike what, man? We're running so, out of time. <laughs> okay. I'm just, it's exciting. Calm down, Good. Chief. You'll be all right. <laughs> okay, Chip. We, and we have fun, too, in class. Yeah, so. we, do. we do. It's a lot of fun. Y'all, these classes, I don't think what we're saying up here is stressing enough of how important they are, not only for the men, because as the men go, so goes the church. There you go. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. And for the women, just, I mean, this is a men's sexual addiction class. I didn't have a problem with sexual addiction. I've never had a problem with sexual addiction. But there's other things that were buried deep. There you go. Of my childhood, the way I was raised, things that happened to me when I was small. And it wasn't anything bad. I wasn't, I wasn't sexually abused or any of that stuff like that. It was just stuff. And we all have stuff. You know, some, somewhere along the line we have stuff. And we don't deal with it. These classes, this class, two weeks in a row. This is my second time around. Not because I didn't get it the first time, but this. <laughs> but the thing is, it helps me deal with the things that just come up. Just sitting in class, something would come on that film, and it would be, wow, where did that come from? I didn't even realize that that was in there, but it was way down there deep. And just by something that, Dr. Robertson said this brought it right to the top. I dealt with it, and it's over. And that's what these classes are about. It's about healing. It's about health. It's about healthy relationship. It's about men being the head of the house, leading your family, changing the way things are. The, they talk about the brain waves, the, the channels that are cut in our mind, the way that we do things the default system that we have. Something happens, the first thing we do is go get high. Something happens, we go get drunk. Something happens, whatever it is, whatever that thing is that's got a hold of you and keeping you bound up. But in these classes, you can set yourself free from this stuff. When the devil squeezes you, the, one of the main things we're learning about this in this class, not only the addiction part of it, but it's about the Word of God. Amen. It's about putting on the whole armor of God and go. having the tools that's you good. need to fight with. Yeah, that's good. And if you put the tools on every day, if you go to work and you take your tools with you, if you walk out of the house, you take your tools with you, you have something to fight with. If not, when the devil squeezes you, that's what's going to come out. So we have to learn how to fight. And these classes teach us that. 
They teach you the weapons that you can use. They teach you the things to look for. They teach you the trigger points to look for. They teach you what your trigger points are. I encourage everyone, women, when it's y'all's turn, flood the gate. Get in there and you understand why we act the way we do. Right. <laughs> and then, then maybe we can understand why you act the way you do. <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to happen. Yeah, I told somebody one time, I said, you know, Lord... You figure her out. You're the one that made her. You understand her because I don't. <laughs> so, but I just encourage y'all. The, these, these classes will set you free Amen. from whatever it is. It's not about. Understand, there's darkness and a lie. That's good. Or you can have the truth and life. And that's what we're here for. We're here because we, we choose life. We made a choice. I tell these guys all the time, I can smoke, drink, cuss, and chew and go with all the girls that do. But I took a stand. I drew a line in the sand. I'm not crossing that line, period. I'm not. It's there for your help. Thank you. Um, Charles is coming up right now. A couple of weeks ago, we had a youth group Sunday Night Live service, and uh, it was called Let's Make a Deal. And in Let's Make a Deal, we had all of these curtains. We had three curtains. We had a big box. We had a little box. We had big envelopes, little envelopes, and the teens tried to make this deal. And some of them got good prizes, and some of them got not so good prizes. And what you thought that looked good and felt good and it was big and it had a nice shiny outer exterior to it, once you opened it, you found out it was nothing that you really wanted. There you go. Right. And so the whole lesson of that night was that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes to give you life and life more abundantly. What the enemy may try to make look shiny and wonderful will take you further than where you would want to go and cost you more than what you're willing to pay. And in the end, all of these uncontrolled thoughts that we have in our mind that lead to these things, these uncontrolled thoughts create these neural pathways in our brain. And as you heard, Pastor D was given the, the, uh, the physiology of it that, you know, your emotions can override the front part of your brain that talks about reasoning, that deals with reasoning, and your emotions can override your reasoning. Right. We've all been there when we've been so frustrated, so angry, so mad about something, so full of ourselves and something that no one could reason with us, not even ourselves. And that's all that the enemy wants. He wants us to fall for that feel like we're justified in what we're doing. Make us feel like, hey, anybody else, if they were you, would do it. But God has called us to do something else. He's called us to be better than that. He's called us to be all that he created us to be. And you're on a specific journey for you. It's not about anybody else. Chip said he drew this line in the sand. And some men said, man, it don't take all of that. He said, for me, it does. It does because you don't know where the Lord is leading me. And where he's leading me, you may not be going. So every person has their own journey. Every person has their own relationship. And that line in the sand, everyone has it. And it's what we're going to do next. The enemy makes something look wonderful on the outside, but soon as you crack that open, there you go. Right. we found out with one young man, when he opened that box, it was full of anchovies and sardines. I don't want a box full of anchovies and sardines. <laughs>
says there's a way that seems right to That's a man, right. but in the end it leads to death and destruction. Narrow is the path and few people take it. Narrow is the path. Narrow is the path. Are we going to stay on the narrow path with the Lord tonight? Are we going to go the way of the world? The way that everybody says, come on now, just do it. It's all right. It feels good. Just do it, man. You're justified. You're
RGM, before we leave, I know we went a little long tonight. Before we leave, can we please do our dollar offering? If you could raise your, your dollar up. We vow to remember the poor. The, Jesus said the poor will be among us at all times. But you know what? We're learning. We are learning in our financial peace class. Thank you, sir. That even um, that we will have the poor among us at all times. We don't have to be poor. And so we are going to uh, we are going to remember those people that do not have, and we're going to we're going to vow to be able to help them. So if you have a dollar, we're going to repeat. We vow. We vow to remember the poor. To remember the poor. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done tonight. We ask that you would bless all of us. If there are men or women that are struggling with these uncontrolled actions, our prayer workers will be up front. Um, they, they will be up front. Don't rush out. This is your time. If you want to sign up for the class that we're talking about on, on May 1st, you will do that at guest services. But let me tell you, these things don't stop just because we talk about them. They continue on in the minds of people. There is no condemnation. This is a house of love and peace and grace. And all we want to do is help you to Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that what you're doing, we ask that there would be a moment in time.